So we just saw the we just saw Bayes rule and the chain rule for probabilities. And perhaps I should have mentioned where this the assumption this assumption here that the probability of the intersections up to n minus 1 is positive comes into play. And well, first of all, in order to make this last probability well defined, we need this, this last conditional probability. And it also implies that the other conditional probabilities are well defined because, say, take this one, for example. So A1 intersect A2, this event contains the event A1 intersect A2 up through intersect A n minus 1, right? Because we're, we're intersecting it with more stuff here, so this is a subset of this one. And since, and so by the, if you recall the monotonicity property of a probability measure, the fact that this one's positive implies that the probability of A intersect 2 is positive also. So we only need to assume it for this one, and that gives us the imp that all the others are well defined. So the, the chain rule, let me just mention briefly, this is uh, often useful when you have certain conditional independence properties. So that, for example, if A2, or rather, if, if A3 is conditionally independent of A1 given A2, or more generally, if An is conditionally independent of A1 up through An minus 2 given An minus 1, then you can drop all these. And that's that one is what happens in what's called a Markov chain. So you get a very nice factorization of the probabilities. It simplifies your life considerably. So now we're going to move on to, oh, I'm not ready for the theorem yet. First we need a definition. So a partition of a set omega, so omega is typically our space, and we're typically going to partition it, but it works, this definition works for any set omega. Our partition of, a partition of omega is a collection of sets, which I will write in this way, say B i, and so this is, let me, explain what I mean here. So this could be a, well I should I should say as part of the definition, it's a finite or countable collection, usually when you write the index i or n or some integer you mean it's countable at least. So what I mean by this is that if it's say accountable then this would be b1 through B n, or if it's, I mean, if it's finite, it would be one through B one through B n. If it's countable, countably infinite, then this would be B one, B two, B three, and so on. E.g. So a partition is a collection of sets B i with each, each of them contained in omega. Or I could write a subset of the power set such that 1, the union of all, well I'll just write i since we don't know exactly what we're summing over, depends on the case, the union of all of them equals omega, and 2, I'll just write it here, the intersection of B i with B j is the empty set whenever i is not equal to j. So this is saying they are pairwise disjoint. So that's a partition. You can think of it Intuitively, it's just sort of splitting up your space into, so if this is our omega, then a partition is just splitting up omega into a, it's partitioning it, splitting it up into some pairwise disjoint, mutually exclusive sets that make up the whole thing. 
So now let's look at the partition rule. There, um, this one's called the partition rule, or I call it that, at least. So what's the partition rule say? Partition rule is that the probability of a set A, an event A, equals the sum over some index set I, or I and some index set, of the probability of A intersect BI for any partition BI of omega. So omega in this case I'm taking in particular to be our sample space, use our terminology, and BI is some partition so it could be finite or countable. Uh, countably infinite. So we're summing over all the different elements of the partition. We're summing them out, if you will. So this also is uh, will come up later in random variables in the context of what's called marginalization. So let's prove this. It's pretty pretty simple to prove. So let's, let's, let's give it a proof. Let me circle that. That's important. One of our key properties. So what's the proof? Well, A we can write as, we can always take the intersection with omega. Omega is the whole space and A is just an, an, a, set, a subset of omega. So A equals its intersection with that. And omega we can rewrite by this property as the union of the bi's in our partition and by a set, one of the properties of sets, we can move this intersection in, it sort of distributes over the union and we get the union over i of a intersect bi. So that's a first observation. And now we want to prove this. So let's write the probability of A. We'll apply our observation here. This is equal to the union of A of the sets A intersect BI for all I. And now these, these sets A intersect BI are pairwise disjoint, right? Because the the bi's were pairwise disjoint by the definition of a partition, and so whatever parts they happen to have in A will also be pairwise disjoint. So by countable additivity or finite additivity, depending on whether it's a countable or finite partition, additivity of a probability measure, this is equal to the probability, or the sum of the probabilities of the intersections. And that's it. That's what we were trying to prove. So that is the partition rule. So we looked at Bayes' rule, the chain rule for probability, and the partition rule. And let me give you one more useful fact here that uh, is quite handy. So let's make some room. So here's a, a little proposition. If the probability Let's see how I want to say. It. So if the probability of B is positive, then Q of A, which we will define by P of A given B, the conditional probability of A given B, defines a probability measure Q. So 
we had some original probability measure P on some underlying uh, probability measure space, and we define a new probability measure Q over the same space. And this is called the conditional probability the conditional probability measure given B. So the useful thing, the nice thing about this, so what this is saying is that if I'm conditioning on some stuff B, on some event B, then I can just sort of let all that stuff hang out on the, in the background and all of the rules of probability apply. We can use all of these, these nice algebraic tools that sort of algebra for probabilities that we developed in in uh, the previous couple videos to conditional probabilities to the this conditional probability measure given B so a lot of times you'll see things like this these Bayes rule and, uh, and in fact those would be good exercises to think about what would Bayes rule look like for a conditional probability measure and what would the chain rule for probability look like or what would the partition rule look like all those apply in the case when we just have some other event hanging out here in the background so i'm not going to prove this little proposition but uh, it's it's just it's basically a, a fairly straightforward measure theory exercise, you just have to verify the the properties of a probability measure on Q. And you can take that as an exercise if you'd like.